Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 2, Dynamics. The section is 2.D, Newton's Third Law, and Eliminating Internal Forces. Here's the scenario. A train engine pulls a train with three cars. Each car has the same mass shown. Suppose that the car are connected by a metal bar with the tension indicated in the diagram, F3, F2, and F1. The car accelerates at a rate of 2 meters per second, assuming the cars travel with no friction force applying on it. Part 1 just asks us to draw a free body diagram and labeling the forces, making sure the lengths are all correct and labeling it with the correct arrows. The first one is on the 3 kilogram car. Going down is going to be the force of gravity, going up is the force normal, and going to the right is the force tension force of F3 shown there. Make sure that the lengths of the force normal and the force of gravity are equal and we only see one force going to the right which is the F3. Here you could try to do it for the force on the 2 kilogram car and the 1 kilogram car. The lengths here are smaller when compared to the first one because it has a smaller mass, so the force of gravity is going to be smaller. So the force normal that is opposite to it is also going to be smaller as well. There's a force that's pulling it back, which is the tension force. It's exactly like what we did here, which is F3, and I label it also the same length. There's a, also an F2 that is being applied to the right. The complete image on the second cart is this. There are four forces in total. Now you can try to do it for the one kilogram, which is just this cart. The reason why I draw F1 a little bit longer is because the object is accelerating to the right. So the force here is longer. The F2 is going to be the same length value as the F2 here. Going up and down is also the force of friction and the force of gravity and the force normal but it is super small because it is on a one kilogram object and that is your free body diagram for all three of them now you could set up the equation for all three of them please understand the definition of Newton's second law that describes forces forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration so you're gonna look at each one of the masses and label what the forces are. So the force here for F3 is going to be the mass, which is 3,000 times the acceleration. Here you have force 2 going forward minus force 3, which is pulling it back, is going to be equal to the mass of this is 2,000 times the acceleration. Here you have F1 going forward minus F2. This is equal to the mass of this is 1,000 times the acceleration. That is all the forces of the, of the equation that represents the horizontal forces. Now, you would like to compute the free body diagram as, with the masses combined. Here, the first one, you're looking at the 2,000 kilogram plus the 3,000 kilogram cart which is equivalent to just looking at the first two carts together. How would that look like? I'm gonna grab the equations from both of these two objects and bring them down so I can work on this here. I want to see them together so I'm gonna combine these two together. So once I add it, this is F3 minus F3, that's gonna be canceled. So all you have left is an F2 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you have a 3,000 and a 2,000. That becomes 5,000. So it should look like F2 should be equal to 5,000 times the acceleration. 5,000 is the combined mass. Now we can draw the free body diagram, making sure that we label it correctly. When we look at the 2 kilogram and the 3 kilogram cart together, the forces, it should just have F2, which is pulling it forward, as well as force normal going up and force normal going down. Using this same idea, you can do this middle one and the last one. I'm going to bring down for 
the two kilogram and one kilogram systems. I'm going to bring down these two and I'm going to work through the algebra. I'm going to combine the left hand side together. Notice the F2 minus the F2 should cancel out. And what you should have left over is a F1 minus F3 left. Then you should have the 2000A plus the 1000A. That together should make 3000A. Now when you draw the free body diagram, it should be smaller because it is 3000 which is the mass force gravity going up is force normal then we could see F1 is going forward and what is dragging it back is F3 okay Next, let's do when we treat all of them together. This is when we combine all three of them together. What happens when we combine all three of them together? These are all your forces that you have in all three systems. You could see some of them cancels out, like the F3 and the F3 here cancels out. The F2 and the F2 here cancels out. The only thing that you have left over is the F1. Now you're going to add 3,000 with 2,000 with 1,000. And that's going to get you a total of 6,000A. So F1 is equal to 6,000A. We could take a look. This one has a long one because it is 6,000. Force of gravity going up is force normal. And the force going forward is F, F of 1. Remember what these are representing. These are the tension forces that are between these objects. So what you are going to do now for this part is you're going to calculate what F1, F2, and F3 is. We know from the problem that the acceleration for the system given to us was A was equal to 2 meters per second squared. So if you would like to figure out each one of them, you just plug it in. F2 is going to be equal to 5,000 5, times the acceleration, which is 2. And it's going to get you a total of F1 is going to, F2 is going to be equal to 10,000 newtons, right? F1, I'm going to do F1 right here, is going to be equal to 6,000 times the A, which is going to be equal to 12,000 newtons. The F3 is going to be the weird part. So I'm going to rewrite this. F1 minus F3 is going to be equal to 3,000 times A, which is 6,000. Okay. But you want F3. So add F3 to the other side. So you get 6,000 plus F3. And you have an F1 here. We know what F1 is. F1 is 12,000. So F1 was really 12,000. If you subtract the 6,000 from both sides, you get F3 is equal to 6,000. Now, I'm going to show you what it represents in the train. Before we do that, I would like to talk to you about what the tension force is in terms of Newton's third law. Let's take a look. Newton's third law states that whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal force in the opposite direction. 
Here, they call that an action-reaction pair. They are the same, but in the opposite direction. So here is Michelangelo's assistant, which is A. He's pulling on the shed. So the force forward is the sled exerting by the assistant. Slay on the assistant, which is going to be the same thing as the assistant on the sleigh. They're, one of them is opposite, so one of them is going to be negative. Same thing here. The force on the ground exerted by the sleigh is the same thing as the sleigh exerted by the ground. All they do is they flip the letters, okay? And one of them is just going to be negative. If you would like to see how a problem works out, you could take a look here. You could pause the video if you would like to take notes. Now we are going to look on that. The force applied forward, there's going to be a tension force because of the bar going in the opposite direction. So let's take a look. There's a 12,000 Newton force that is going to the right. That is the sum of all three forces. And you should see that from the calculation above here. So F1 is described with this arrow, which is 12,000. There's an equal and opposite force opposing of that of the same value. So there's a 12,000 Newton force going back opposite of that direction. Exactly that was given. But let's see, we can only look at F2. And when we just look at these two parts, what should it be? Remember, it still should be 12,000. So I broke this up. The F2, which is a combination of these two masses, we got it here as 10,000. That should make sense because 3,000 times 2,000 is 5,000 mass times the acceleration, which would be 10,000. Here, this is the 1,000 times the acceleration, which is 2,000. That should make sense, right? Because these two forces should add up to the 12,000. Likewise, if we break it up again to each individual piece, you should see how the rest works. I broke it up into three arrows, and so it's, it's each individual force, mass, and here on the 3,000, the opposite of that would be your 6,000. That makes sense because we have the 6,000 here, Newtons. On the second one, which is 2,000, that one should be 4,000 to the back. Do you see how these two will combine to get the 10,000 and the 2,000 Newtons here? Good. Now, you can use what you got here to answer these questions. So think about the force going forward is the force applied. The one that's fighting it is the force tension, which is in blue. Without referencing any math, we just use this though. You want, you want to explain why F1, which is 12,000, and F3 is the smaller one, which is 2,000. Even though F3 has is connected to the greater mass, why is that? I wrote that the acceleration of the system is the acceleration of each individual block. A cis is equal to A1 equals to A2 times A3. F1 has the greatest tension of 12,000 because the mass of the system is a combination of all the masses together. Notice F1, which is um, going forward, is pulling the 3,000 kilogram, the 2,000 kilogram, and the 1,000 kilogram all together. That is the reason why its opposite force is greatest, 12,000 newtons. Now, in class, we should have done this. And if you're watching, this is a really good cheat sheet for the mechanics. These are all the simple blocks on a horizontal surface that you're ever going to get. And these are by its um, calculations of um, acceleration and tension. One block, acceleration is just F over M. Here you could see the minus UMG is for minusing the coefficient of friction. Here you could see how when it's two blocks, the acceleration of the system are those combined and there's only one tension force, which is just the M1 times the acceleration because that is the one going back. Um, this is what happens when it is three. There are two tension forces that you can calculate. The um, M1 times A and the tension 2, which is when you add these two masses together, exactly like what we did. Um, 
down here i gave you it what it is on a friction um with friction as well okay and this is with friction the friction ones are on bottom all right but there you go uh, this is a good cheat sheet to have but you should be able to derive it these are all your notes and solutions for 2d